Hi, I'm Jesse Heron, host of Rediscover Your Story, a podcast for marketers who need a break from the everyday learning, but still want to hear from like-minded professionals on all things creative. Today, we have Jake Whitman, founder of Really Good Box Wine. If you want to survive the holidays, you're going to want to listen to this episode. Okay, here we go. Cheers. 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 On the podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a successful tech. <laughs> Coughing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, oh no, it's going down the wrong pipe and I can't stop it. Um, Jesse, give me your keys. Hashtag, but first, if you're loving Rediscover Your Story, go ahead and smash that bell and subscribe on YouTube. And don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and wherever you can get your streaming content. And hey, if you're interested in who we are at Resolve, we're a video content agency and we can help you create your video content marketing just like we're doing with the podcast. Please follow along at our website, resolve.com. That's R-E-S-L-V.com. Subscribe to our newsletter and never hesitate to reach out to us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We can't wait to hear from you. Hey, Jake. How's it going? Good. How are you? Great. Can't complain. Welcome to the Rediscover Your Story podcast, holiday edition. I feel very honored to be the holiday edition. Well, when you said yes, like I told you, I was fist pumping. I was like, yes, we're getting Jake. We're getting really good box wine. We're getting the presents, all the things. Get it all. It's a great present. It's a great thing to drink during the holidays. So it it, it makes sense. It does make sense. So, hey, on the podcast, I was thinking it would be fun if we, drank while we talked? Hell yeah. Are we good with that? Of course. You want to pour us some wine? Let's do it. Okay, tell us about your wine that you're pouring too. Sure. So this is a um, 2021 Pinot Noir from the, ooh, I'm going to make sure I don't bump the mic. There you go. Um, from the San Luis Obispo Coast. I'm not peeing. That's wine being poured. <laughs> <laughs> and the San Luis Obispo Coast is a really interesting region. Um, it is one of the newest designation, regional designations in California is I think March of last year. And um, Central Coast, San Luis Obispo. Cheers. Mm. We'll drink it while Cheers. we talk. Cheers. I know. Wait, let me we smell can't... first. Can I smell yeah, first? Of course. Ooh. It's nice. Smells good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So this wine... About 75% of it comes from a region of the San Luis Obispo Coast called the Edna Valley, which is sort of the cream of the crop region in that area. And actually our chief operating officer at Really Good Box Wine has known this winemaker for a very long time. And we've been trying for like two and a half years to partner with him on the wine. And really? we finally did it. We finally produced the right wine alongside him. And this is the wine that you're drinking. Well, it is excellent. Thank you. Yeah, it's really, really good. Okay, so talk to me about what you would pair this wine with, mm. or tell me, tell me like, okay, when do you break out this wine? Is this during like friends and family over? Is this a dinner party wine? Is this just like a I mean, conversation wine? I would say that this wine in particular, it's it's. I would say it's a light to medium body Pinot. I think it satisfies all of that. It's fantastic with, I might not pair like the biggest red meat steak with it, but yeah, it's yeah. a pretty versatile wine you could pair chicken you can definitely do vegetarian dishes so it's a great dinner party wine it also you know if you have 12 people over it's four bottles worth of wine so it's basically your wine for the night which is is kind of awesome Mm -hmm. Um, but i would definitely drink this wine just come home tired after a day of work need to decompress a little bit pour a glass of wine yeah for sure no it's like it's very light Mm -hmm. it's tasty um, I'm going to take another sip cause it's really good. <laughs> There's a lot more where it came from. <laughs> There's four bottles in there. So <laughs> if you want to drink up, go for it. <laughs> oh my God. That's really good. It's really, Thank really you. good. Thank you. Okay. I feel like we have to like Tarantino style back into the beginning, but I had sure. to get the wine poured so yeah, we could get that going. That's of course. important. Where did this idea of really good box wine come from? Purely as a consumer. I have no background in wine direct. Well, I like wine. Okay, I've been drinking you drink wine. wine. I drink wine. I enjoy wine. Okay. I'm a wine drinker. Okay, yes, for it. sure. Okay. But no professional background in wine, no professional background in alcohol. Um, other than I've worked drinking, in drinking again, drinking and <laughs> I've worked in five restaurants when I was younger, most of them in Cincinnati. So I've, I've got some sort of house, like front of house experience, but, but no professional experience. And during COVID, my wife and I would buy a box of wine every once in a while. Yep. We loved all the benefits, right? Mm-hmm. It's four bottles worth of wine and a pretty compact package. 
it's like it's 85% more sustainable. Yeah. It's sure. it's way more sustainable. It's this little terrible hidden fact in the wine industry that glass packaging and corks and all the styrofoam that protected is far and away the biggest environmental impact in the wine industry. I never by far. thought about it that way, but you're absolutely right. I was actually, as you were talking, I was thinking about a dinner party that we had recently and all the bottles. And every time I turned around, it was like the recycling bin. It was like clink. Oh yeah. Clink, clink. We did a, this is a total <laughs> tangent, but we did a event um, maybe six months ago on a rooftop for a neighborhood association in Columbus. And we went through 10 boxes which is 40 bottles worth of wine. Wow. And it was one of those like apartment rooftops that are, you know, they're like not really, uh, they're event spaces, but they're more like apartment amenities. Sure, they don't sure. have all like the amenities of, sure. of a full event space. And we had some caterers, but this was the wine that we were pouring. And at the end of the event, we broke down the 10 boxes, threw them in the recycling bin, and we were done in five minutes. And the caterers looked at me like, can I curse on the podcast? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. That was the, <laughs> that was the fastest fucking breakdown I've ever seen in my entire life. No hauling out 40 glass bottles, yeah. no finding a recycling bin to put that much waste into. It was broken down in five minutes and we were out the door. Yeah. So, it, you know, and shrink that down to wine at home. It's, yeah. you know, your recycling bin isn't full of bottles. So you're saving the environment, basically. We're saving the environment. I mean, one box at a time. One box of wine at a time. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so it also- New tagline. Don't worry. Yeah, exactly. One box at a <laughs> time. So anyway, so all these benefits yes. that we loved, you have in your countertop, it stays fresh for six weeks after you open it because oxygen doesn't touch the wine. And so you can just have a glass and not be forced. Wine is this weird piece of the alcohol industry where like, like beer is all single serve and spirits don't go bad when you open them. But yeah. wine- for some reason, the industry has like forced us to drink five bottles, for, sorry, five glasses, glasses of wine. yeah, in, in a, a night. In a night. In, yes. Yes, the wine maybe is okay the next day. Some it's wines are better. It's not the same. It's not. It's not it the changes. same. It changes. Oxygen changes wine. Mm -hmm. And so this just literally just eliminates that problem completely. It, it goes away. Um, and so you can have a glass and not worry about drinking the whole thing or feeling guilty if you dump the bottle two days later. Yep or feeling guilty if you over drink and feel like crap the next day, like all of those yeah. things that come into yeah. it. So anyway, so we loved all these benefits and I'm, you know, I was, I was working in FinTech out in California at the time. And I, I'm one of those people that has like a notes in my phone of like 5,000 <laughs> random ideas. Yeah. And most of them are absolutely terrible ideas. They're not good <laughs> ideas, but they're just like something pops in my mind. I write it down. And this is one that we had talked about a little bit. And then it was March of 21 and I was sitting in Santa Monica. My brother lives in LA and Grace and I were out visiting him and we were sitting in Santa Monica drinking a bottle of rosé. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started talking about it. We're like, man, a we, were, we weren't really supposed to have glass, but we were just like kind of undoing it and hiding it. We're like a, gla a box of wine would be amazing, but yeah. why isn't there really good box wine? Like that There's was literally a stigma the stigma around box wine. hundred percent. You buy the box Huge wine, stigma. you're buying Franzi and it's cheap shit. Yeah. It's that's the stigma. Slap the bag in college. Like that's how everybody's, <laughs> that's wasn't. everybody's first experience with box wine. I wasn't Everyone. sure if I was going to bring that up yeah, or not. But I was like, yeah. I'm wearing the trashy home alone shirt. I'm definitely going to bring up slap the bag. A hundred percent. And like, we yeah. don't shy away from it. That's why we call it really, this isn't Whitman Cellars. This is yes. really good box wine. We tell you like it is. We want to be direct. We want to take a lot of, we want to overcome the stigma of box wine, but we also want to, I don't know, make great wine more accessible to people. Yeah, you're leaning into it. We're really leaning into it. Okay. We're hitting it right on the nose. We're not pretending that this isn't in a cardboard box. We actually want right. to celebrate the format instead of apologize for it. I love that. And so I went home that night after we had, and had been sitting around drinking rosé and spent like eight hours deep diving. I was like, is there a technical reason why you can't do this? No, there's no technical reason why you can't. Is this happening in other parts of the world? Yeah, 44% of wines in supermarkets in France our box, 80% in Norway, right? Because they understand the benefits of it and they're, it's, a, it's much more established in their culture. Mm -hmm. um, the environmental piece is amazing. Consumer, you know, consumers are looking for things that are more convenient and more sustainable. And they're, I don't know, the next generation doesn't care as much about the tradition and the ostentatiousness of things like sleek glass bottles. Mm -hmm. They'd rather drink great wine in a more convenient way. And so it was, and then direct to consumer was growing and all the infrastructure around that and the compliance, which is really hard in alcohol was yeah. improving for direct. And so it was like there were tailwinds everywhere. Right. And right. so we put a test together and um, so I, I sort of paused everything I was doing, hired a graphic designer off of, I think I either find they're on Fiverr or Upwork, but it wasn't, you know, I just sort of found someone mm -hmm. and uh, 
called the one person I knew in the wine industry. And she was like, I love it. Let's, I was like, do you want to do the first one together? And she said, yes. Four months later, we had our first box produced and we were out the door with our, with our test run. And we launched our first pilot in August of 2021, which is I think right around when I met you. When we met, yeah, I was one of your pilot drinkers. That's right. (laughs) That's right. So we, we poured it an event from a mutual friend of ours. Yep. And shout uh, out to Steve Abbott. Shout out to Steve Abbott. That's right. He's, he's why we're here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we met and we poured and people loved it. And then we sold out of our first couple hundred boxes in like five days. Mm -hmm. Most people I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, there's something here. We did a second pilot nationwide, sold out another few hundred of them in about four days to 23 States. And we're like, okay, we've sold a couple thousand bottles worth of wine in nine days. Like there's there's something there's here. something really here. Let's go mm-hmm. see if we can make this a real business. Um, so I went out to Sonoma and spent about three weeks kind of building out a supply chain, found an amazing wine consultant. I realized very quickly I would need to have someone on my team who knew the industry, had relationships, really knew the nuances and intricacies of wine. Yeah, sure. You need an <clears throat> insider. Totally. And yeah. so she came as a consultant. She's now our chief operating officer and is like, I mean, she's amazing. That's Absolutely fantastic. incredible. Yeah. Um, and then in January of 22, we launched our full or kind of full national launch without kind of these small quantity restrictions. And we've been running ever since. That's amazing. Cheers. It's been a journey. Cheers. It's been a journey in yeah. a good way. It's a true, yeah. you know, startup is a true roller coaster. It sounds, I tell the story and it obviously sounds very glamorous. Like everything just worked and everything. And so that's what didn't work. You know. Let's dive into something that sure. didn't work. I want to hear what didn't work because Because you're right. I think that, and part of the reason why I love this podcast, we brought on multiple entrepreneurs. And um, I think that one of the things that people do get hung up on is this glorious story of like, oh, he was in FinTech. You were at Procter & Gamble too, right? I was at P&G and then Intuit and then SoFi. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you have this, you have a good background. You you know principles of marketing and branding and you know some of the things, right? But, But you go from that to where you are today and there's bumps. There's got to be bumps, oh, yeah. right? So daily. tell me, tell me daily, okay. daily bumps. Tell me some of the bumps. <laughs> I want to hear some of the bumps because again, I think people do get hung up on like, Oh, here it is. It's sure. perfect. It's great. And now we, they're selling and it's all great, but it took a, a lot to get here. Oh yeah. I, you know, there's, there's, a, I, I, I think of business in particular, but entrepreneurship even more so because you're just sort of creating something from scratch. It's just a series of solving one problem after another and trying to grow through it. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we've had major packaging problems. Um, we've had that we've had to have fire drills to fly out to the, to the co-packer to fix, right. We've had, um, we've had wine, we, we have these little mini tubes. Um, and our first run of them were, were a bacteria got in and we made thousands of them and they were destroyed and yep. we couldn't sell them. Right. Yep. And we had to go figure out what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to, going back to the stigma, I mean, there's a very real stigma about boxed wine. People think it equals low quality wine and producers have spent billions of literally billions of dollars in advertising over the past 30 to 40 years, convincing you of that. I'll tell you right now, it's not shit. Yeah. It's, it's so good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you're welcome. You. I mean, we, our focus is creating wines that would be 30 to $40 per bottle. That's like kind of our sweet spot. Yep. Um, and that comes in, you know, it's all hand hand picked and hand harvested grapes. There's no additives. It's aged in real oak barrels. We're not adding oak chips and liquid tannin and mega purple and all the stuff that a lot of the lower end wines are adding. We're making beautiful wine mm-hmm. that would, you know, sell for 40 bucks on a shelf normally. Um, but we're putting it in a box and we can sell it to you for half, for less than half the price. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and sorry. the box is cute. I mean, honestly, yeah. from a packaging perspective too, like, again, it is that stigma, um, not trying to make fun of my mother-in-law, but it's going to come out. And I hope she just <laughs> rolls with me on this. But I just remember when my husband and I were dating, she would have the Franzia box in the refrigerator at all times. Yep. Now, um, brilliant. Cause to your point, her wine, she could drink that baby for sure. a month. You know, That's I right. mean that, that thing would last. So every time we would come over, I'm like, I knew there'd be a Franzia in the fridge if I needed a little alcohol or yeah. whatever at an event. Um, but it's like this giant glass, the box, I mean, the box is just not, 
fun or sexy or creative. Oh, it's, the Franzia box. The Franzia oh, box. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's purely sorry. functional. It's purely functional. And yeah. it's not hitting the market of young professionals, 30s to 40s. I mean, I really, mm. truly think that, not that you're not hitting another target audience, but I look at that box wine, your box wine, the packaging, and I think yeah. that's my age group. Yeah. That's for me. I'm 41. I'll just go ahead and say that. Yep. And it's for me. It's for me when I have the neighborhood ladies over totally. or the other moms from school or whatever, and it's always at the ready. Totally. You know, and there's no kids running around, right? No. At our age, I'm close to your age. Like, yeah. Kids running around, there's no glass to worry about breaking. Yeah. Go to a yeah. pool outside. You want to, you know, like the Cincinnati Sports Club, we have friends who bring, you can't bring glass out to the pool. Exactly. Same with our pool. Yeah. But you can throw a, you can bring a box of wine. You can bring a box of wine out there. Right. <laughs> and so, with um, a handy handle. <laughs> with a handy handle. Or, or, you know what, if you really need to, and this is where we don't, you know, we're not pretentious about it. If you want to pull the bag out and throw it in, right. a, in, a, in some ice to keep the Sauvignon hey, Blanc cold. Do it. It's right? great wine. Yeah. It's great wine. Yeah. You know, you're going to exactly. be able to drink good wine. Um, just don't play slap the bag. Just we're, don't play slap the bag. Or tap it very gently and have a nice little <laughs> sip. Yeah. Right. That's all. We've graduated to that type of slap the bag. <laughs> Please tell me, Steve, that you are going to um, pull up some sort of like slap the bag motion of some sort that's going to yeah. follow on this podcast. Just find someone like a tuxedo that like is gently tapping the bag. Yeah. <laughs> Have well, you ever you played the game? Just film it right now if you want. <laughs> there oh my go. God. Don't <laughs> we tempt sure me could. with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, so, you know, I always say about on, like if we talk about what ha what have been the challenges, like, yeah. you know, when you're an entrepreneur, I was a brand director at Procter & Gamble. If there was a problem, there were 85 people who had been there before, seen that problem. Our experts are some of the, I mean, not just experts, they're probably some of the yeah. best people in the world, at literally yeah. in the entire universe about solving whatever that problem is. Yeah. And now I do the everything from the equivalent of like the cleaning, the vomit in your bar at the end of the night, all yep. the way through like pitching VCs. And sometimes those two things are happening, not just you know, in the same day, but sometimes right. back to back within right. minutes of each other. Right. Um, and so, you know, it's a lot of, you're just constantly chasing down things, but ideally as you learn and you grow, you minimize those and you can focus on just kind of getting, getting the wine out there in the world. What's been like the biggest thing that you've learned so far in this journey from, you know, that, that night that you were kind of hanging out, drinking wine and doing, and then doing the research. Yeah to now? I mean, what's been the biggest thing that you've like learned? You learn a lot about yourself. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. You learn how you man. I mean, stress is real in the corporate world, but stress is really real when you're like, I'm weeks from running out of cash. Yeah. Right. And yeah. this business could close in weeks if we don't kind of solve some sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and so you learn how you definitely learn how you manage stress. Um, I think you learn, you really learn what you do and don't like to do and want to do because you kind of have to do everything at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we have a team, you know, we have a very small team for the business that we're doing. So we're person, we're sort of intentionally lean. Like we don't own the vineyards. We don't own the wineries. We yeah. don't own the manu, we don't own the manufacturing processes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we still have to do a lot, mm -hmm. but I've hired people that do a lot of the stuff that I both don't like doing and I'm not good at yeah. like compliance management. Sure. Not only do I not like doing it, I'm also just like not very good at it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I forget things, right, you sure. know, like it's just, yeah. it's not really the way my brain works. It's, I was just going to say, it's a totally different side of your brain, right? Yeah. Like doing Excel spreadsheets. Yeah. Ugh. See, I love Excel spreadsheets. What? I What's love them, but I don't like <laughs> needing to manage filings and taxes. And yes. I mean, you're, you know, you're managing the state after state after state and everything is a different process, a different license, a different everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just not the way my brain works. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So you, I think you learn a lot about what you do and don't like to do and want to do. Um, and then there's, I, yeah, it's a lot of just like, how do I, how do I, like, how am I personally responding to the pressure that you both put on yourself and sometimes have on from the outside on, yep. you know, the expectation of continuing to build this thing. And some of it is definitely like, like I put the pressure on myself to grow this business because yeah, I, sure. that's, you know, I think the world deserves more box wine. And so let's go introduce it to the world. I was going to say that, and you probably believe in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to believe in it, 100%. right? It's your product. You have to believe in it. And I have to say too. So again, we met through, um, very early days, very. like, I think 
like the month you launched basically, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, probably the like, month after because we launched on the 28th and I think we did that event in September. In September, so. you're right. Yeah, okay, yeah. so it was like the month after you launched, that's when we met. Um, you were literally serving wine next to Molly Wellman. Yes, I was. Okay, Which so. Which was a very fun conversation. And it was like, this is an instant credentialing to be sit, standing next to Molly Wellman serving well, I this thought wine. about that. Like <laughs> knowing that you were coming on the podcast, I was like, gosh, I was just like thinking like, okay, how do we meet? I was like, oh shit. He was literally serving wine early yeah. in your, you know, creation of the wine next to Molly Wellman, yeah. who is like Casual. Cincinnati's like, I don't know, bartender. Um, I don't know. It's one of the best bartenders in the world or something. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Best bartender in the world. Yeah. Um, and then I just remember too, like I ordered wine from you, you hand delivered the wine to me. Uh-huh. I don't know if you remember that. I, I was actually getting my headshots done for Resolve I when I first started at Resolve. Yeah. And we met at some sketchy in the warehouse. in the parking in the parking lot behind the warehouse. Behind the warehouse yeah. and we were getting our headshots. Yeah. Um to now. Yeah. I mean, that's that's some serious growth. Do you get to reflect on the growth from beginning to now very often? Do you think about it and reflect on it? I mean, I think celebrating growth and wins is good. Yeah. It is sometimes hard when you're in the day to day, mm-hmm. um, and the the winds feel incremental when you're in the day to day, as mm-hmm. opposed to looking back to fall of 2021 and hand delivering a couple hundred boxes around Cincinnati. Right, <laughs> right, exactly, um, exactly, yeah. And, but it is fun to look back on those days. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like it's funny. Sometimes I feel like we've gone so far, mm-hmm. and sometimes I'm like, we still have so far to go. Yeah. From where we were then to where we are, to, to where we are now and where we want to go. Yeah. Um, you know, I think one of the things that I've definitely learned is like things happen twice as slowly, half as fast, half maybe as fast. is the better way to say that things <laughs> drinking happen. Drinking wine folks, yeah. We're drinking wine on the podcast. Only half a glass <laughs> in, but you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, things happen half as fast as I, as you would expect it to. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, we have big ambitions with this company to really disrupt the national wine landscape and how consumers all over the country and all over the world consume high-end wine. Um, and so we feel like we have a lot more to do, but yes, when you think back to those days when I was hand delivering a couple hundred boxes in Cincinnati, cause yeah. that was the only way to do it. And the only yeah. way to test it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It feels like you've come a really long way. Um, I have to say, so Rico Grant was on our podcast. Yep. Um, he's from season one, but he talks about disruption. Um, mm-hmm. and he says that disruption is sexy. Like he like really, Hell yeah, it is. Pull, yeah. Right. Yeah. He really pulled it out. It was one of my favorite things that he said. And, um, I, I am so excited to say that I think this is absolutely disrupting the marketplace. Thank you. I mean, um, I think you should talk to us about some of your other wines. Sure, I, you I brought, brought a couple other. others. I know. So you're going to have to describe it and for people who are listening from yep. an audio perspective and tell us about we'll the other wines. Show it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you can show it too if you want. Yeah. So we have six We have six total wines out right now. We have six? Total. Wow. We've launched 13 over the course of the business. Really? So we have six out right now. I brought three of them, one okay. that we're drinking. Yeah. Um, I'll bury the lead for the second one and talk about this first one. Not okay. that it is any less amazing. So no. yeah. Um, the one... One of the ones, I, other ones I brought is uh, a 2022 Sauvignon Blanc single vineyard from the Russian River Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, the vines for this one, um, I think they're like 24 to 28, 28 years old, really kind of wow. older vines in the mm-hmm. Russian River Valley. Absolutely beautiful wine. Um, has that bright, crisp acidity. I actually think that aside from the one that I'm just going to mention in a minute, that this mm-hmm. might be the best wine that we've ever done. Really? This Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. I mean, single vineyard Russian River Valley Sauvignon Blancs. You know, they're they're hard to find anywhere other than kind of specialty wine shops or going to that area. And, mm-hmm. you know, they may sell for forty, fifty dollars and up a bottle. Um and we had we got really fortunate to get in contact with this vineyard owner um who happened to have some excess wine nice. and it typically sells it for and we can't say who it is because yeah. he sells his bottles Secrets. for it's it is and that's part of the negotiation right sure. because they sell their their product for two or three times what we do um but we partnered with them and we said you know and our winemaker is always involved we're not just buying wine and just dropping it in the bag like our winemaker is involved and she finishes the wine and all that but oftentimes we are bringing in close to finished wine mm-hmm. and this was we t- as soon as we taste it, we're like, how do we get our hands on this wine? It's phenomenal, that's phenomenal Sauvignon Blanc. So you only have like, a, so that's another thing too. You only have like a limited supply normally, right? Yeah. So Shit, I'll- Jake, I'm going to buy every freaking one of these boxes before you leave <laughs> Come on. today. Yeah. 
Um, Just hand you my credit card. Yeah, right? <laughs> so all of our wines are vintage, okay. which means we produce a certain amount and then- That's it. That's it, right? So like, this is the 2022 vintage. We made a certain amount of this wine. When it sells out, it sells out. We just sold out of our Grenache Rosé about a month and a half ago, and people are still emailing us, asking us when it's coming back. And we're like, well, this Rosé is not coming back because we're not just- in a lab manufacturing and adding yeah. sugars and stuff to make the same wine taste the same year after year. We're making vintage wine. So it could taste totally different the next time that you maybe partner mm -hmm. with that with that vineyard. Mm -hmm. That's that's when you know. Or we, or right? we go to like, a different vineyard, right? Yeah. Like we're gonna our our last um, rosé was a Grenache, which is a very classic rosé grape. Our first one was a Pinot Noir mm -hmm. that came from the same vineyard actually is that very first Pinot. Mm -hmm. And then the one that's coming up is going to be Beta a tester. That's right. <laughs> I still that's love right. that I get those emails. Like, because you're an OG, yep. you get the special deal. We give the special deals to the people who are with us from the beginning mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next one will be a different grape from a different yeah. partner. And we've, we're actually harvesting those grapes as we speak. Um, and we'll be actually crushing and producing that wine. So we're not bringing in finished wine. We're bringing the grapes in and producing the wine. That's awesome. Um, so that's the Sauvignon Blanc. And then I have the wine that we are- I almost feel like there should be a drum roll here. I know. The most proud of, that of anything that we've done, 2019 cab from a single vineyard in Napa in the Oak Knoll district called the Knollwood Vineyard. Um, it is- I'm our, like smiling just I thinking know, about uh, buying this. Me too. This. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had it, we've, we, this is our newest, newest release. Right mm -hmm. now it's wine club only. It will release, there's a wait list building. Okay. right now mm -hmm. and we'll open it to the wait list soon. Actually, by the time this episode comes out, it'll be, it'll be open, the, it'll be open yep. to the wait list. Yep. And, and then assuming, assuming that uh, it doesn't sell out before then, then we'll open it to the public. So we're sort of trickling it out Got to it. wine club, then wait list, then kind yep. of general public. Yep. Um, wait, so you have a wine club. Mm -hmm. Am I in this wine club? If you're getting wines delivered to you every month, you're in the wine club. Well, shit. That's another <laughs> thing I need to do. <laughs> um, but this one, I mean, we, you know, we, we, uh, we got a nice article written up in Men's Journal from one of wine enthusiasts, um, 40 under 40 tastemakers, and he's been named Small of the Year and all this stuff. Oh, and cool. he was like, they did the dang thing and put a hundred dollar wine in a box. Like it, this, this was that's our, what they said. that's what the article was. And like this, the vision for this is to just like, we get a lot, we get a lot like, wow, your box wine is expensive. It's $60 a box. Yeah. But how many bottles are in there? Four. Right. So people people think the stigma is that it's cheap wine. So we're like, okay, fine. No. We're going to make a $120 box. Yeah. <laughs> we'll show you. We'll show you. And people are clamoring for it. It's This wine is, I mean, it's the kind of wine that like you buy in a trip to Napa and put in your cellar for 10 years and wait for that and special occasion. And wait for occasion. that special occasion. Do you, okay, so can we talk about that? Yeah. Can we talk about what people do with wines? Sure. Because I do this. I'll buy a bottle of wine. And then I put it in our downstairs. I wouldn't call it a cellar. That's, I'm not, I don't have a cellar. Yeah. I would like one, but I don't. But we have Separated. shelf, we have shelves in the basement that yeah. are for like the reserved wines. Yep. And then we have the shelf upstairs where it's like, eh, it's Your a Tuesday. You're daily drinking wine. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Pull yeah. that bottle. It's a Tuesday. Do you know, fun, quick little story. We had cousins in from New Jersey. We're sitting outside, we're drinking. George, my husband, God love him. I was saving a bottle. I don't know for what, and that's the problem, is you get to this point where you're saving this bottle and you have no idea what you're saving it for, yeah. but you keep saving it and saving it. And it was probably like a couple hundred dollar bottle of wine. He just like randomly pulled it out. And I was like, oh what are you doing? my God. <laughs> but I was so happy he did that. Yeah. We start drinking it. Do you know that I spilled my glass of wine oh, no. on the table? I licked it up. <laughs> Because it was like, that was a $200 bottle. I am <laughs> like, getting the juice out of this. It's not my best moment, but what do you do? <laughs> hey, I, I- You look I, it up. I'm I not judging. <laughs> I've, I've, done, I've done the same. I'm not judging. <laughs> and then he was like, you're not getting another glass because you fucked that up. <laughs> I was like, I just wasn't ready yeah. for the- Anyway, yeah. Yeah, I but mean- that's what that box, that's what that box is. That's right. It's the box of pull That's the box, box where like, if you spill some, you might lick it up. You might. You might. You might. But you're paying thirty dollars a bottle instead of two hundred dollars a bottle. That's crazy. Which is which is, you know, part of what we want to do is yeah. to give not everybody can afford a two hundred dollar bottle of wine. Yeah. Or a hundred dollar bottle of wine. Yeah. Or an eighty dollar bottle of wine. You know, Camus, for example, sells for like eighty Ugh, bucks a bottle. So right. Good though, yeah. It is it is very good. Mm -hmm. Um but not everybody has access to Camus. Well we actually you know, we want to be able to give people 
I would argue even higher quality than Camus in this yep. box. Yep. And, and, just pay, and, and pay 30 bucks for bottle four and be able to drink this really amazing sort of luxurious flavor that is often too reserved for, I don't know, the top 1% kind of thing, yeah. right? And so that a big mission with our with ours is really being a inclusive wine brand that invites people in to sort of discover wine in a way that's not intimidating, in a way that doesn't break the bank and give people access to this amazing wine that they may not have really discovered before. Yeah. And who's your target market? Like, who are you actually thinking about when you're, when you're thinking about your marketing? Mm -hmm. Again, you have this amazing marketing background. So I know marketing is, sure. is high on the list of things that you're thinking about. Who are you thinking about as your target market when you're selling your wine? It, it's really interesting. Like we, we have who I still think our long-term target is. Um, and then we look at our actual customer base and we have enough customers now that it actually tells us something in the early days. You're like, okay, is this skewed because of personal relationships or whatever, sure. but we have a big enough customer base that we can actually get some pretty good insights. Um, our core market is kind of what you mentioned earlier in the episode. It's mid millennial through gen X mm -hmm. people who think of themselves as wine drinkers. They yep. like good, they like good wine, but they don't really care about the tradition of glass bottles, at least not always. Like we're not going to replace glass bottles forever, but like sure. on your Tuesday night, you don't need to open a fancy glass bottle and mm -hmm. it's wasteful and it forces you to drink five drinks and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, and it's people who are really looking for like, it fits the lifestyle more conveniently. Um, and, but people who really do think of themselves as like discerning wine drinkers. And yeah. most of our, most of our customers didn't trade up from a Boda box or a Franzia. They traded in from bottles. Yes. Right. Right. That's right. more, that's much more likely of the, um, the customer base. So that's definitely our core customer. It's our biggest customer base is that kind of area. But then we see another massive spike over the age of 65, mm. really big. We have a huge customer base over the age of 65. And how are you reaching that? Facebook. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. In word of mouth. I mean, yeah. Facebook, word of mouth, wine writers, that kind of thing there. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that we, in talking to some, as to say, we think we know some of it and we have hypotheses about others yeah. is you know, all of our wines are vintage varietal and have a, have a premium region on the label. It's one of the things that differentiates us first other, every other box wine. There's no other box wine out there that has those three elements on all of their wines. Say it again. Um, so these are the three elements that differentiate you. The vintage, which is the year it was harvested, Yep. which means you can't Get it any Doc other time. You can't doctor it the next year. Yep. It's a different vintage. Mm -hmm. um, the varietal. So this is not a California red. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon or even like our red blend. We actually put on the label. It's 65% Merlot, 35% Syrah. So you know what you're drinking. Exactly. Okay. And then the region that it comes from. And it's always, it's as tight of a designation as we can get because that gives it you know, a lot of times wineries, a California red, for example, might be sourcing from massive commercial vineyards in a random place in California. If I tell you that our Sauvignon Blancs from the Russian River Valley, that is a very tight area. Very specific area, yeah. And all the vineyards are very premium. They're all sustainable. You yep. know that there's great winemaking practices and all that stuff. So those three elements are on all of our boxes. That means a lot more to the generation who have been drinking wine like this for yep. decades, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so we think that they're very drawn to that. And then in addition to that, there's some convenience things. Sometimes it's corks are hard to manage. Yeah. Sometimes it's retire is I'm retired and I just want to be able to drink a glass of wine whenever I want. Whenever I want. Yeah. And so yeah. there's some lifestyle reasons why there's some sort of knowledge reasons why. Um, and again, we're not replacing bottles for people. We're we're not replacing bottles entirely for people. We are fitting in to certain lifestyle situations that make more sense for this format versus You're bottles. You're like meeting them where they need to be met. Yeah, totally. I love that. Okay. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Yeah. So we have these two spikes and you know, it's like as we grow and I do still think you're right that like our core customer is this yep. mid millennial through Gen X. Like that is really who I think our focus is, but we don't want to lose sight of the fact that we are solving some real problem, both solving some problems and delighting some people who are over the age of 65 and making sure we don't forget that group of people as we grow. So you talked about using <clears throat> Facebook as a way and, and word of mouth as mm -hmm. a way to reach some of your target audiences. What else are you doing to kind of get the word out there? We are, I would call us like a e-commerce brand that sells wine rather than a winery that sells online <laughs> in terms of our go-to-market strategies. Yeah, right. So you know, we're using some of the most 
kind of call it sophisticated kind of digital marketing strategies. We're leveraging data all the time. Um, so, you know, we're built on Shopify, which is an amazing platform yes. for any e-commerce brand. That's yeah, a great platform. Um, we use email marketing very effectively. Um, emails yeah. are incredibly, they're, they're far and away our best channel. Um, and That's then awesome. we've grown our SMS side. So there's a lot of kind of direct one-to-one -one communication. I saw that in your last email, like, Hey, do you want to connect via SMS? Yeah. Yeah. And I love how, um, your tone, your messaging and your tone, it's like, we're not going to spam you. And totally. if you don't like it, you can just like just say stop, just cancel. I, I, it's so non like, eh, that's whatever. Yeah. Join it if you want to. And yeah. Hey, we're going to provide you some value. Yeah. If you want to join it and you like our wine, you're going to be able to get it cheaper. You're going to get access to things that you wouldn't otherwise, but we don't want to like, I think gone are the days on subscriptions of like holding people hostage. That was right. 20 years ago. Right. People were always trying to hold you hot and don't get me wrong. There are certain industries that are still doing, yes, still they doing are. it. Where you cannot find an unsubscribe to not. save your freaking life. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But I think the best brands, especially when you're in, when you're, starting something young like ours, it, uh, you want people to feel like they're part of something and not forced into something. And so yeah. if our wine club and if our wine club or our SMS list or email list feel like you're getting true value in your life, that's, then you're going to stick around Yeah. other than just be pissed off and trying to do everything you can to cancel. Right. And <laughs> I mean, that messaging feels so intentional. Oh yeah. That tone, that Absolutely. messaging, it's so intentional. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. So email marketing, you've got really great sophisticated digital advertising, yep. SMS. Yep. So that's kind of how you're hitting paid, everybody. The paid advertising. Paid advertising. Yeah. We do a lot of paid, um, which has scaled pretty significantly the last call it two quarters or so. Mm -hmm. Um, we tested for, I mean, okay, we'll talk about one of the challenges. Yes. There's a lot of stigma around box wine. I think I knew it going in and maybe didn't realize how dramatic the really? the perception was. And so every single person you talk to, you've got to convince, no, 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 this isn't the box wine you're thinking. This is really, this is, we'd say, uh, it's not expensive box wine, it's affordable fine wine, is one of the lines that we've been saying. Yeah. And we're just trying to- So you're testing that messaging, you have to test totally. it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we tested for like 14 months without really, really, really finding the thing that could scale and paid. And so we would find something that was kind of working, we'd accelerate spend and customer acquisition costs would like fall off a cliff and we'd pull back spend and we'd test yep. something else for yep. like 14 months. And it really is like a day trader for social media and like mm -hmm. advertising. Like you're just turning dials up, totally. trying to see how far you can push someone. And then you're like, Oh, okay. Too far. Turning yeah. the dial back down. Like you're really just, you're tweaking all the time. Constantly. Yeah. And so we finally found something maybe a hundred and 120 days ago that when we started turning the dials up, the CAC, the customer acquisition cost CAC uh, continued to stay. And then as we grew, then, you know, the algorithm learns and you exit learning phase and all that yep. stuff. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. we were starting to scale spend and our acquisition costs are coming down, which is the dream That's scenario. That's like the beautiful phase. It's the dream scenario. It is. Um, and not that they're where we want them to be. We need sure. to continue to bring them lower and that, mm -hmm. but now we're like, now we're working with something like now mm -hmm. we're, we're not just sort of throwing spaghetti at the wall and be like, okay, let's try this idea. Let's try that idea. Now we're optimizing and iterating and saying, okay, these things worked. Let's put a few more pieces of creative in that do this. Or like, let's change the buying strategy a little bit for this one because yep. we know this creative resonates, but maybe there's a better audience or targeting strategy, which is just like light years different than what we were doing four months, five months ago. Yeah. Well, it, and with digital, I mean, it's so much easier to test. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, I'm not going to say it's inexpensive. That's not a fair statement. It's still expensive, sure. but it's less expensive. And it's something that you can really just on the fly oh, yeah. understand if it's what you do, it's so it's fast. fast. Yeah, <laughs> It's like, oh shit, that didn't work. Turn that turn off. off. Turn this one on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll talk to it. We have a small agency that runs all of our day to day it's great. kind of paid. Yeah. I talk to him every day. Yeah. Almost. Of course. And sometimes yeah. it's like three times a day. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the reporting, I mean, you're looking at the reporting. So, so day to day, you have that kind of like finite scope of like what you're making impact on or what you're not making impact on. Yep. But then when you look at like the full month or a full quarter, mm -hmm. it's kind of really interesting to kind of peel that back and, and yeah. see from that 20,000 foot view, but it's fast. It's fast. Mm -hmm. I used to, I used to, you know, I went from P and G, which is, I love Procter and Gamble. Don't get me it's wrong. It's a slow, it's a, it's slow. process. <laughs> well, it has to be slow because sure, sure. you're protecting billions of dollars in business. Sure. You're going through third, you're going through the biggest retailers in the world that yes. are on annual and sometimes more 
it, it, buying it's, cycles. A, it's a behemoth of an organization. Yes. So if you want to create change, it takes a long time to make change. Yes. And the agency, the digital agency I used to work for, we would say things like, well, yeah, we're flipping the P&G model on its head. Yeah. Because it's digital and it's a totally different beast. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a different animal, but like it's SoFi was all digital acquisition. It was a consumer. I was the head of product marketing for one of their products based mm -hmm. for, for the money product. Mm -hmm. And we were in growth mode and acquisition. We're trying to do everything we can to acquire customers. And we're looking at daily acquisition reports, daily active users yeah. reports and tweaking daily basically. Yeah. And so we went, I went from operating in like months and years at P and G to sometimes like days mm -hmm. at SoFi. Mm -hmm. And now we're in like hours sometimes. Hours. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So that's it's a very crazy. different, very different way of working. That's for sure. So, so, so one like last, like big question, I guess I'll say is coming off of this, working for a PNG, SoFi, you're coming out of FinTech. So you probably were working at like very stable, mm -hmm. nice, lovely income coming in every day <laughs> <laughs> to kind of like jumping out of an airplane without a parachute. Yeah. Um, what would you tell a future entrepreneur like, what's like something that you would say to them? Like, yeah. do it or like fucking run? I wouldn't tell them either of those. Okay. I think, I think, okay. yeah. So the best advice that I was given, and this was from a entrepreneur who had had a successful, like very close friend of mine who okay. had had a start a company, had gone through a couple of like major pivots and then eventually exited the business. Yeah. Um, that's a goal. Definitely a goal. <laughs> if you're paid out. That's right. That's right. Um, was don't fall in love with the idea of being an entrepreneur, fall in love with actually being an entrepreneur because those are very different things. Yes. It's in, we talked about a little bit at the beginning, like I get to go out in the world and talk about the idea of being an entrepreneur. I get to come on podcasts and talk about this fun brand that we've built. We get to drink wine together. Yep. It's the pot, it's the Instagram side of the story. Yep. What everybody doesn't see and what, every entrepreneur out there that you see is going through is they're just chaos below the water trying mm -hmm. to trying to survive. It's like the swan. Like it's a yeah. beautiful swan above the water and under the water you're like kicking like yeah. crazy. It's churning down mm -hmm. there. And you've got to fall in love with that part too or else you're never going to make it because the things that you have to do, the mistakes that you make that yep. are really devastating mistakes sometimes or very expensive mistakes sometimes when you don't have the money of a PNG or a SoFi and into it. Um, yeah, to fall back on. There's nothing to yeah, fall back there's on. There's no people on. to fall back on. Mm -hmm. Everything, every win and every failure is on you. And you've got to love that or at least think that you're going to love it. You may not really know if you love it until you try it, but you've yeah. got to think that you're, that you're going to love that. And I'm also a big fan of like testing it testing as fast as you can, as cheaply as you can. Mm -hmm. So like fail fast, the fail fast mentality, yeah. mm -hmm. the fail fast mentality for sure. Like mm -hmm. the, the best thing, the second best thing that could have happened in that first pilot run of the, of really good box wine that you tried yeah. was nobody bought it. Right. Cause I would have spent the last since September of 2021, I would have been doing something else. Right. But we learned really fast. Like I, I have friends who are starting startups who've been working out for three years and they've never gone to market and they have a side bit, like it's their side project yeah. and they have a full-time job and all that, Yeah. but they're like scared to go unless everything is perfect. Yeah. And like, I mean, I'm that pack, that first packaging, like I'm slightly embarrassed about it, but that meant it was the right time to go. Like it was definitely the wrong packaging for the product. And it was probably the wrong kind of wine too. Although the wine was amazing. It was Amazing. It's amazing wine, yeah. but like pro, like pro, like it was a, it was way too expensive for what we we're trying to do. Is like the wine sure. that I just had access to. Sure, sure. And um, but we learned, and we learned really fast within four months from sitting around drinking rosé right. to launching the business. Right, was like four months. Um, That's a really quick, like, go to market. Yeah. Time frame. Yeah, and like I, I mean, we're just like, let's put it out in the world and see. But I love that. I think that's really smart. It's just a just to kind of be this agile business to mm -hmm. iterate and to go quick. Yeah. I mean, I told you the same thing, like with our podcast, we were just like, yeah, 
I don't know. Let's put it out there. Let's just try. Let's just put it out there. And our first four episodes, God love the first four people who like <laughs> struggled through it with me. I mean, I am not Barbara Walters. I don't know what the fuck I'm You're doing. You're doing great. Oh, You're doing great. You. <laughs> Even choking on <laughs> the podcast, it's fine. But the thing is, is like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I know I can talk to people. Yeah. I know I love to learn about people and sure. their stories, but. Mm. But you know what? You may yeah. have done the first, the first three and been like, I hate this. That's true. And then you would have been like, all right, we tried it. Yeah. Move, move on. on. Move on to the next thing. Instead of one wondering if like for yes. three years making this podcast be perfect yes. and then learning that too late and like hats off to people who have the courage to move on that's a it's huge... even harder than starting it sometimes i think that's huge it's just so emotionally invested sometimes yes. financially, financially invested invested yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 well i i'm just so proud of this Thank i'm you. so excited i'm excited to buy all the wine that you brought today that'll be <laughs> super fun <laughs> Because that's going to happen. I appreciate it. If you let me yeah. buy the yeah, yeah, yeah. really nice bottle. Buy the reserve. Box, yeah, buy yeah. the reserve. Yeah. Um, I think we can make that happen. Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. No, this was so fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I can't wait. I, honestly, I cannot wait to see and like watch your journey continue. And it's going to be amazing. I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. Cool. Do you guys want to do a quick holiday toast before before you? <gasps> yeah, sign we off? do. It sounds know appropriate. Why, so. I know. We need a little more. We need a, we need a little bit more. A little bit more. Oh, let's let's yeah. top it off. Yeah, let's top it off here. here. Let's top off that wine. Right this way, I could help this time. That's okay. I've done this many times. I did not help last time at all. I felt like a dick about it. Amazing. There you go. Here's that. Cool. Okay. All right. Hey, um, cheers. Cheers. To you. Cheers to the holidays. Yeah. Cheers to the holidays. Get some really good boxed wine if you want to, you know, get some. Well, where can they get it actually? Tell that. Good. Good question. Yeah. So we sell most of it online. Reallygoodboxedwine.com. Go right to the website. We ship out of our fulfillment centers in St. Louis. So if you're in the Cincinnati area, it's here in like a day. It's awesome. really fast. Um, but it gets most places in the country within a couple of days. Um, yeah, we've got a, if you, if you want to uh, buy a first box, there's a first box discount code that I'll give all of your listeners. It's okay. first box. <laughs> <laughs> Very clever. F-I-R-S-T-B-O-X. No spaces. No spaces. Just first box. So okay. your first order, give you 15 bucks off. Your oh, first order good deal. Um, to give you a chance to try it. And I the, feel like a big time podcast are giving out a code. Your discount code. Steve, do you have yours over there? I got it right here. Okay, right. here we go. Cheers. 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 It's really good. It's so good. <laughs> it's really good. I'm buying everything. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. I'm done. I love it. <laughs> Oh my God, you made it this far in the podcast. You know what you get? You get this special treat of following us on our website, resolve.com. That's R-E-S-L-V.com. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, smash that bell on YouTube, and we have a newsletter. So that's pretty cool if you want to stay connected with us all the time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>